Chapter 5 Action All action is God's. God's power has fixed each thing into its own individual function. By God's agency, the insentient objects and the sentient beings do their work. All actions are that. All are doing their respective work. So what has God to do with it? We will first consider the sentient beings and later on the insentient objects. We are sentient beings. Let us first see whose actions are ours. We all desire a higher state and work for it. But our achievements are not uniform. Sometimes the goal is the same and so is the work. But why is there a difference in the results? Here God makes us understand that the action is God's. Otherwise, all must be alike. The difference in the conditions cannot be accounted for. Can there be anyone who does not wish to improve their position? Whatever their intention towards others, their intention towards themselves is surely honest. The conditions of people of the same intention are yet different. This is because all actions are of God. All beings have the same intention, yet their efforts are of different degrees, so also their states. After saying this, the question arises, what is effort? Is it not simply a mental image? All these images have the same origin, namely the common intention of all. Why then should the image of effort differ in each? Here too we see that all actions are God.
If it is said that notwithstanding the same intention, the effort can vary according to individual capacity, the question arises, what is the source of this capacity? It is of the body and mind. The environment may also affect it. One must take account of all the factors before one makes an effort. However, these factors are not under one's control, so that the effort may not be equal to the task. Therefore, all actions are God's. Again, if it is said that the body, the mind and the environment will gradually be made equal to the task, it implies a present incapacity. This is to admit that all actions are God's. Now, is it good or bad that people do not gain their objectives? It is certainly good. Why? Because most of them are selfish. Judge for yourself if their success is for the good of the world or otherwise. You may ask, should not the attempts of the unselfish be entirely successful? Though to all appearances they may look unselfish, yet they are not free from blemishes. These depend on the ego. If the imagined unselfishness has given rise to a sense of superiority over others. God frustrates their purpose and teaches them that you are also like others and I govern you. On the other hand, free from selfishness and free from ego is the representative of God, within whom the cloud of ego that conceals God does not exist, and from whom God is ever shining forth. To such a one of true purpose, all their intentions come out true. God shines forth directly in them. There is no darkness in them. Only they know the divine purpose as it is. Through them, God fulfills the purpose of God's creation. All actions are God's.
if it is asked, is there not a single person of true intent? And why should not the world have all blessings in full? The answer, which is a secret, is that the sages who are aware that all actions are God's wish to make it known to others as well. There is no greater good than to know that all actions are God's and not our own. This knowledge contains all the blessings in itself. Therefore, the intention of the sages is to clearly instruct others in the knowledge of this and God's actions. Even so, they do not say, no God this very instant, but they teach the ways and means to knowledge and encourage us in right conduct. This much only. They do not say, be emancipated at once. Why? Because this is not possible for the common people. Nor do the sages say to God, liberate the people at once. Because the sages are free from the ego and think, God knows what should be done and when to do it. What is there for me to say to God? Thus they wish only to do their work without any interest in the fruits this work may produce. They have known that God alone dispenses the fruits of actions. Simply they watch the course of events in the world and do their work, never thinking of creating a world of their own. Why? Because to do so is a form of egoism. The creation is as it should be. Everything is in order. All actions are God's. Knowing their actions are subservient to the higher power, how could they hope to achieve something dear to their hearts? No, they cannot. They will do their work simply as a duty. The scriptures say, do work but do not think of its fruits. Just as anger unconsciously overpowers a person, even though they are determined not to get angry, so also the sages of true intent may be shocked 
by the iniquities of the world and unwittingly think, God, let that be made good. If so, then it will certainly happen and good will prevail. This is the cause of some extraordinary events in the world. These extraordinary events are the results of a wish stealing into the mind of a sage. This is the law of nature. Who can change it? All actions are gods. Whatever takes place, it is in the natural order of things. Also, it is right. Everything happens by God's will alone. But in truth, it is not wrong to think God makes the thief steal. Why? Because at the time of punishment, God also makes the thief suffer for the robbery. Thus, there should be no ill will directed towards the thief. Such is the fruit of the knowledge that all actions are God's. Although there is no ill will towards a thief, there is a dislike of theft. This is also the result of our knowledge that all actions are God's. How is this? Because the thief himself dislikes theft. Would he keep quiet if his own belongings were stolen by another? He would not. Who can be unaware that good is right and evil is wrong? Therefore, the knowledge that all actions are God's will bring into the world an era of orderly conduct. Our knowledge does not extend further. We can repeat only what we know. We need not worry about what lies beyond our knowledge. This too is God's will.
One of the fruits of knowledge granted to us by God is the knowledge that all actions are God's. We are powerless to ask God, why do you act thus? Because the fruits of our actions are not always according to our desire, all religions admit similar states of our powerlessness. In other words, because our powers are limited, we cannot but say that all actions are God's. The law which applies to us applies to insentient objects also. Our law is no better than theirs. All is one. Even though some do not admit that all actions are God's, yet they admit their own incapacity. This itself is the act of God. Chapter 6 Ego O oh, Ego, all the evils of the world are from you. To crush you, the kings make laws and the wise give lessons. In spite of their efforts, from time immemorial. Alas, you are yet alive. You simply go into hiding and reappear again and again. Can there be no end to you? Yea, it is surely approaching. Another ego has started to kill you. It is the universal ego called I am Brahman. Her ego, think not that your enemy is of your kind. You are perishable, whereas that is not. You are conceited as I, because you always differentiate as I 
you and he. But your enemy is free from this conceit. How? They harmonize all differences, resolve all into themselves. Moreover, you feel enmity towards that because it has arisen to kill you. But that has no ill feelings towards you. How is this? Because you are not to be found in its presence. It regards you as a part of its limbs. Your loss in its proximity is the working of your own falsity. It would not think of killing you because you are of no consequence in its sight. Therefore, ego, you are its enemy, but it is not yours. More briefly put, you are your own enemy. Why? Owing to your greed, you flaunted yourself before the Great One, as you would elsewhere. Instantly, you were lost. Therefore, the Universal Self obscures you by devouring you, and then shines forth as all light. Her ego, the evils of your works have no limits. You are not content unless you are exalted above others and others are lowered before you. Endless are your desires, such as, by what title shall I gain honour? In what form shall I appear elegant? Do others bow to me? Do others obey me in silence? Do others say that no one excels me? Alas, how short is your life, and yet, to how much do you aspire? And how much evil do you do? You have deluded yourself that there is happiness in such ideas and in differentiating yourself from all others. This is not to your good. Why not? Are not others also entitled to all these? What is your share in things which are common to millions and millions of others?
Such being the case, do not desire in vain to rule over all. By your vain desire, you bring about evil to yourself and to others. Listen to my friendly advice. Truly speaking, that whom you regard as your mortal enemy is your friend. That knows how to make you worthy of true greatness and blessings. Surrender to that. This universal ego does not treat you as an enemy, but is your greatest benefactor. By no means can you discover what that will make of you unless you surrender yourself. However much I may speak of it, you cannot understand. It is a matter of experience. Doubtless, that will do nothing less then exalt you to its state. Therefore, be not perplexed about your future. Directly surrender yourself. You can always turn away if joy does not overtake you from the very instant of surrender. Just as the drinking of milk starts with an agreeable taste and ends with the satisfaction of hunger, so also surrender starts with delight and ends with perfect bliss, which lies beyond even pleasure and pain. Therefore your goal, without doubt, is this universal ego. I am Brahman. What will be your new name after surrender? There is no name besides yours. The Vedas laud you. The world praises you. The essence of religious teachings is yourself. Then what is your form? All forms are yours. 
there is no form which is not yours. What is installed in the temples of worship is you. What is described in the Vedas is you. Festivities and celebrations are all for you. Now what can be your power? In your presence the world is active. Each is what it is because of you. Briefly said, all things glorify you and bear witness to your being. They are duty bound to do so. You would not have even dreamt that this will be your state. Start at once. Be not self-conceited. The universal ego awaits you. Do you wish to wake up from your dream or continue in it? How long will the dream images last? Be not idle, shake off your sleep, wake up. You are witnessing your own mental images and imagining more and more. It is all in vain. Just find out who it is that sees the visions. Do not delude yourself that you are these that rise and sink in you. Wake up. The instant you wake up, you will know that waking is better than this dream. Get up. The universal ego waits to rejoice at seeing you awake. Fear not the cessation of the present ego dream. Once you are awake, you will enjoy the same all the more. You will no longer be deluded and will observe it with cheerful detachment 
and confused. The folly of all appearances will be understood and you will have no burdens. In dream, your mental imagery assumes shapes. On waking, you know the dream as just a dream. Do not mistake dream for the waking state. Know the dream as dream. For doing so, you must reach the state of I am Brahman and wake from the illusion of the ego. I have instructed you for your good and not in my own interest. If you believe me, you should act upon what I have taught you. On the other hand, if you see no good in what I have said, then turn away from this ideal. How can I help you if my advice and all the advice of the saints do not make any impression on you? No state is higher than this. Believe me, it is for your good that you realize this truth. And through you, Others may realize the same. Be free from self-conceit. Start at once. Realize that the universal ego is your own. Oh ego, see how you are a slave to all and therefore suffer. How pitiable is your state. All are hostile to you. When you say, for me only, all others will also contend for me only, for me only. When you say, I am great, they protest. Why? 
we are also. All are hostile to you. Owing to the troubles caused by others, your mental images increase a million fold. Should you not rise above them and profit by surrendering to a master, then all your enemies will befriend you. If you say to others, all these are yours, everyone becomes your friend. There is only one who can make you that magnanimous, and that is I am Brahman. I shall say one word only, and this is not owing to my egoism. It is simply my duty. I do not say this word just for your or my good alone. It is for the good of all. The truth is... I am Brahman. 